Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. This is the most up-to-date information I can give you in regards to your dirty, filthy, rotten EGR system. And that's really what it is. Um, <clears throat> basically, we're talking 1KDs here first. So 1KD FTV came out in Hiluxes in 2005. That was sort of Euro 3, not as bad. But they still put a plate in with a 7mm hole. That's this one here. Okay, um, in 2006 sometime, that's when the 120 Prado came out with the 1KD FTV and the Hilux engine changed also. Um, the plate they put in is this one here, right? K-On 4x4 on eBay, right? K-A-O-N 4x4, K-On 4x4, plate with a 7mm hole. What I can tell you is it works really well. We'll get to a little bit more of that in a moment. Um, 150 Prado, doesn't matter when they changed, still the same plate on the 1KD FTV up until sometime in 2015. Okay, so that's the plate there. Now, like I said, it works really well. We don't buy, sell, or install them. Um, we could, just, you know, small things, you know what I mean? Small fruit, so very busy, um, and we're limited to what we can do. And that's what we're gonna talk about is a little bit of what do we do, but not in this video. So we're going to tell you everything we do, what we do, what we do and what we don't do. But this one is about this plate. Works really well. What do I mean by that? Well, basically, and we'll get to this one over here in a minute, okay? So let me explain it to you again. So you've got a crankcase ventilation system. You can call it positive crankcase ventilation. You're like PCV, CV, whatever. It's crankcase. You're venting the engine. The engine, needs, the engine needs to breathe like your shower, you know, all the steam and everything. There's a fan there, or there might be even just an opening in the roof if you haven't got a fan or it doesn't work, you know, and the steam goes out. It's kind of the same, right? We, I've done other videos explaining this, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. Basically, the engine needs to be vented. The main thing it's taking out is moisture, because moisture and oil don't mix. It ends up all gluggy and thick and messy. Now, there's some combustion gases and whatever, you know, a bit of this, bit of that no big deal but with venting that also takes a little bit of kind of like really light oil mist because it's hot in there and the oil's splashing sloshing around sort of thing so it takes a little bit of that oil mist as well and what it does it puts this really super light coat through your intake system now this is not just 1kd 1kd ftvs this is all engines pretty well you know general general comment you know all engines have got crankcase ventilation petrols diesels whatever right very light amount of oil in the intake now obviously it varies from vehicle to vehicle um, and it depends on the age of the vehicle it depends on what oil you're using you know what viscosity what temperature you're using it in all sorts of variables right but generally all the ones we see which in the last while let's say um, have all been 1kd ftvs right and generally they're very light now where does that oil come from it comes from your sump if it was putting a lot of oil into your intake your engine oil level would be dropping in your service interval in between your, you know, 10,000 Ks or whenever you're doing it. And we all know, unless you've got a problem, these engines don't use oil, okay? You might use, I don't know, you might use 50 mil in 10,000 Ks. So that's about how much oil. You think about the amount of air that's going through that engine in 10,000 Ks, and then the amount of oil. So it is absolutely bugger all. So look, whatever brand of catch can you want to use, it ain't gonna catch much, and it isn't gonna clean it all out so your intake's dry. And if it does, well then you've got another problem because it's not the problem, okay? Now it's not there, it's not designed to lubricate your valves or anything like that, but having that bit of oil in there does help lubricate things, okay? So we've seen that in checking valve clearances and compression tests and stuff like that. That's what we believe, it does help, and there's other people that have found the same and believe the same. Now, let's not argue about it though. If you want a catch can, let's be clear. If you want to have a catch can or not, doesn't bother me, whatever, it's not my car, okay? So, if you want to spend a few hundred bucks and go and put it on, go ahead. Now, let's talk about the EGR system, right? That's what this is, an EGR, exhaust gas recirculation. EGR flow reduction plate, what's EGR? Think about it, what did I just say? Exhaust gas recirculation. So, taking exhaust gases and recirculating it into your air intake, sound like a good idea? No, it doesn't really, does it? So it's there for a purpose, okay? So it's designed to reduce nitrogen oxide, which you've got to, like I say, Google and do your research on what they are and all the different types and the different temperatures. And then you can maybe work out, you know, a few things. And then you've got to, so 
by reducing nitrogen oxides, by adding these inert gases, so you know, hot air, to kind of stuff up the combustion. They call it cool little combustion, that's what it does, because it stuffs up the combustion. But by doing so, you're going to increase every other emission, including carbon monoxide. So it's kind of Rob Peter to pay Paul. Do your own research. I'm just here to tell you what works. I'm not telling you to do it or not do it, whatever. We do, these are free. If you get, They're not free on their own. Like, you know, we sell the injector kit so that you get the right, genuine, fresh, brand new injectors with all the other parts, pipes, seals, gaskets, EGR gaskets, map filters, tools, bits and pieces, support and service and warranty. And, you know, it goes on, right? So if you're interested in injectors or you're ready to buy them, that's when you call me. If you're not sure yet, well, you can watch our video on YouTube, search buying injectors, and that'll give you a rough guide on what's included in the kit. There's a whole lot of variables, right? It's a, it's a saving of probably, you know, last time we got a price from a Toyota dealer on the East Coast, our kit's a saving of about $700 compared to their pricing. Obviously, the price has changed, but thereabouts, okay? It would be um, fairly accurate to say that. Um, which is fair enough, right? Obviously, we're not a Toyota dealer. We don't have the overheads they have, so we can do these things. Now, EJR plate, if you just, you've just got to ask for it. It's free, you just, you know, it's not a, you know, you just organize your kit, no worries. And then at the end, you've got to mention your freebies. There's a number of freebies. If you watch the videos, there's only a few, but you know, they're good little handy things to have. Can I please have this? Can I please have that? Can I please have a plate with a seven mil hole? No problem, we'll put it in. Yeah, just make sure it's written on your order and before obviously otherwise it won't because it's a freebie i need to write it there free ejar plate okay now that pretty well covers that doesn't it you know so exhaust gas you know do you get it in your exhaust gases there's all the soot and obviously the worse the vehicle's running that the what's the what's the word opposite to clean filthy look the worse the vehicle's running unclean filthy dirty diesel thing right then you're going to have more of that soot more of that in the exhaust so of course it's going to cake, cake up your intake more the cleaner the vehicle's running clean fresh injectors and running right um, the cleaner your exhaust going to be less soot and all that right so something to think about um, basically it works okay so we see vehicles come in you know dozens of vehicles i've looked at we'll keep it down to dozens we're not going to exaggerate dozens dozens and dozens we're not going to say hundreds or thousands dozens and dozens isn't that enough so over the years, people have been using this since I think about 2014 or 15 or so, about four years, let's say. It's all very about, right? About four years, thousands of people have used it because you can have a look at the sales on eBay and heaps of people are selling them. They weren't selling many before people started using the seven mil hole because that's what works. You don't generally get an engine light and someone's going to go, oh yeah, but I did. But look, it's not the plate. It's, you know, it might even be since you put the plate in because you left the vacuum line off or something, you know, chemicals are used, damaged a component. You forgot to put something on you put vacuum lines back to front or there's something wrong with your e-just system anyway it's not working right because there's thousands that it does work so if yours isn't working right and you add a plate to it it could be just enough to push it over the edge but it is very rare so generally we'll say it works no problem it, we believe it still allows your e-just system to work because look it's got a hole in it right right there's a hole so it does allow a little bit of flow so that's awesome at idle, you know, you get your small percentage. It takes a very small amount of inert gases to cool the combustion, so that's great. Um, so I'm going here, I'm on a roll, aren't I? So take a breath. Okay, so it works. The intake stays clean, no catch can. You can take it off after as long as you like and the EJR valves alloy in colour. That means it works. If you add a catch can to that, it doesn't work, it's black, okay? Now some people have told me they're getting a build up just like they didn't have a plate or a catch can, okay? So they, they then go and remove the catch can, clean it all again, and then it's okay. We know that the plate on its own works, both together in theory sounds good, but what's actually happened is not what you would think is gonna happen. So, and just the catch can, of course it stays cleaner because there's less oil, so it stays a bit cleaner, but quite a few people have put up their results lately on different pages and whatever, and some groups you just wanna be careful. You don't even wanna be in there, it's just a load of rubbish. Anyway, so um, they put up their results. There it is. There's the photos. Filthy thing. I'm getting rid of the catch can. I'm putting the plate in. That sort of thing. And there's some people that have checked. You know, don't take my word for it. You've seen dozens and dozens. You know, check your own. Pull it all apart again and uh, check it for yourself after 50,000 Ks because you've got nothing better to do. And um, you can see for yourself. So it works. Like I said, I don't care what you do or not. I'm not talking about the legalities of it, you know. Okay, if you were to shut off your EJR, of course, it is definitely illegal. No doubt about it in every state of Australia. Definitely, if you get it 
you know, shut off electronically, it is illegal. Now, most people don't seem to care. They're doing it anyway. They're, they're shutting off EGRs. They're, you know, get, deleting DPFs and all sorts of things, whatever. That's another video. Um, this one is the EGR plate. Now, depending, you've got to read it yourself. It's different in each state. I've done a bit of research on it, and I'm not a lawyer, but I'll say it's a grey area, you know. The wording they use, you know, you could argue about it all day whether, you know, whether... Because you haven't necessarily... You've re-engineered it, you've reduced the flow. If it still works, well, you haven't... There's a word they use, I can't think of it. Uh, it's not disabled, you haven't... Um, it's kind of like, yeah, sort of reduced its efficiency is what the word means. But anyway, um, if it still works, happy days. But look, you need to work that part out. I don't buy, sell or install or tell you it's legal. I just tell you it's free with a kit and I can tell you it definitely works damn well. Um, and that's the done thing. That's what everyone's been doing for years. Now, that's one KD finish. That's this side over here. Now, the one GD FTVs now. I'm told, okay, so generally I'm going to say, generally we don't work on them, there's that, like I said, one person limited to what I can do, specialising on 1KD FTV fuel systems, now if you need injectors for any other diesel, of course we can supply injectors, not kits, just diesel injectors, um, but this is the flow reduction, flow reduction plate for it, now you can see straight away, the whole pipe work is much bigger, okay, so even the outside, right, the, the size of the pipe, I think, Again, people, I haven't um, dis, dis, disassembled one, dismantled one, whatever you want to call it, sound like a motor wrecker, dismantled, dismantle is no. I have not removed, dismantled an intake or EGR pipe on a 1GD FTV yet, and we will, but haven't done it yet, but we know people that have, lots of different people supply us information and their experiences, which is good, um, and they tell me that this is a 26 mil diameter hole, right? I haven't measured it myself. Again, this is what people say. That looks about, sounds about right to me. And this is a 32 mil hole. Now, it might not sound like much, but it's the cubic millimeters or whatever area that increases, which if you do it by mathematical calculation, which I haven't, it's probably like another 100% or something like, okay, this for example, that's a 93% reduction. Seven mil sounds like a big hole still, doesn't it? But you've blocked 93%. I can tell you that because, again, I actually, I didn't do it. So we shouldn't rely on it too much. That was someone else that was into the numbers that said, I've done it. 93% is the answer. You can do it if you like, going from 26 down to 32. Anyway, to not get an engine light on the 1GD, I'm told that you need a 13mm hole. Now, other people, there is people that have said they've used a smaller hole and it's worked. It's a bit like the 7mm hole. Some people reckon they've used a 5 or 6 and it's worked, right? So there is variables, but when we come up with seven, or whoever came up with seven, um, that allows for, it's gonna work on 99.999% of cars that have got all the EGR system working normally. Same deal with this one, I think 13 mils to go. There was one gentleman back in about 2015 or 16 when they came out, he put a plate in. I think he started off at seven mil engine light, drilled it out, eight mil engine light, nine mil, and he got to 13, and. I never heard from him again, so hey, hopefully no news is good news. I didn't put it in there, whatever, he was on the other side of the country, but he was good enough to feed me some information. Now, I would love to see in the comments, anyone that's, you know, let's say, you know, it might not be your car, anyone that knows of a 1GD FTV that's got a plate of any sort, obviously with it shut off, it's, it's gonna stay clean, right? So anyone that's got a plate of any sort like this, let us know whereabouts in the um, EGR system, because you've got a few options. The obvious side would be, that's the other thing. I've got more information about this yet, where it generally, where it goes and how easy it is to put in. But let us know where you put yours, what size hole and what you did. And if you've pulled any components off to have a look and see if it's worked or if you've put a camera in or whatever, that sort of thing. Now this would go at the driver's side. So on the exhaust side of the engine, um, you can see the pipe at the rear towards the firewall and it's simple as undo the two nuts. This is where you need these little tags that people talk about. And literally it just slips in, bada boom, bada bing, right? I've never installed one. Um, but you can see how easy it would go in and that is the product. And you can get those, of course, from K on 4x4. Um, that's your EGR talk, right? So that's how it is. Do a bit of your own research. Um, you know, I know it's... You know, people all over the net try and explain things and you just get little snippets here and there and it can be really confusing. So I sort of do this to hopefully explain to you what works, what doesn't work and um, just some good reliable information and complete from start to finish. I don't know what else I can tell you about EGR 
it's a filthy idea on diesels. Um, probably works. Look, it works reasonably. On a petrol, you can do it because you haven't got those particulates, right? A diesel's got at least like 50 times more particulates. It's terrible. So what would be really good is if they use the exhaust. How about this for an idea, guys? Put this out there for the manufacturers. Use the exhaust gases from after the DPF filter, right? How, the, how would that be for an idea? Mate, you better give me the thumbs up for that idea. How good's that, right? Because DPF filter, right? You know, it's filtered all the soot out. It's clean. Mate, put that hot exhaust, exhaust gases in. You know, we've been saying for years, all you need is some hot air or put a filter on it. Well, there's your filter. All you've got to do, hello, take it from after the DPF filter, right? Bada boom, bada bing. Beautiful. Anyway, guys, I hope this one's helped and helped you understand it a bit more on what works and what doesn't. You know what? I'll tell you a couple other things while we're at. Let's go back to 1KD FTV, this one over here. Now, if you do get a if you do get an engine light, the code you're most likely going to get is a P0400, okay? EJAR flow low, um, or you know, low flow, something along those lines. Um, it's a good code to have. It's awesome because what it's telling you is your EJAR is not flowing enough. Okay, so if you get it once a week, the best fix is probably just to get a scan gauge or some other product, you know, an app on your phone with a Bluetooth dongle or a EDS or whatever brand you want, cheap as possible, something that you can read the code and clear it with, right? And the EDS is handy. It's only 70 bucks and you can see your coolant temps and other stuff like that as well. It allows you to read codes. As the vehicles get older, they, they look, you know, you're going to get these little brain fart things they have every now and then where the engine light comes on and it could be another some other code and you might never see it again but at least you can read it take a photo of it so you know what it is then you know where to look what area you can contact someone like myself you know that knows all the numbers and, and what, what all the regular things are and you've got somewhere to look without a number right if you've got to go disconnect the battery you're never going to know what it was without a number it's no use you need a number it's all about diagnostic it's been that way for decades now and those numbers mean everything so get it get that so you can get a number if it happens every now and then, you just clear it, no big deal. Now, if it's happening every 20 minutes or every 20 k's or five times a day, it's going to do your head in. You've got an issue somewhere with your EJAR system. Now, these are the few things we find. Obviously, the biggest one is people not putting vacuum lines on correctly. Okay. The other thing is on the EJAR cooler, that shaft that goes through where that vacuum actuator is, that can stick at either end, so they can get a bit stuck at this and that end. We've actually heard of them being seized before. Um, someone recently said the sensor on top of the EGR valve can get dirty and sticky as well. What else was there? Um, obviously you could have a faulty EGR valve. I haven't seen that. I've heard of a lot of people have contacted me where they've got this issue and I went to wherever and it's not named anywhere and they replaced the EGR valve and it's still not fixed. You know, just because you've got an EGR code doesn't mean it's your EGR valve. It's like you know, exhaust, uh, you've got a uh, oh, you've got a code and it says, you know, oxygen sensor uh, mixture's too rich. So you replace the sensor. I mean, there's something wrong with the sensor. It's just telling you it's too rich. So you've got a problem somewhere else. Well, you might have a problem with the sensor. It just depends what car it is. This is the problem. So many different makes, models and whatever. And it's hard to know anything about all of them. Um, so look, you know, that's why I specialise in what I do. Try and get good at it. It's a popular vehicle. They're awesome vehicles. We've picked one of the best to um, work on, obviously. And um, what else can I tell you? There's your EJR video. Done. Dusted. Hopefully some information there if you're getting a P0400 to help you sort it out. And if you do have that and you do work out what your problem is, please post it on our groups. Share the information. If everybody can share the information, we're all just helping each other out. One of our main groups for 1KD FTV is hashtag 1KD Forever Crew, right? So hashtag 1KD Forever, all in capitals and then not the rest of the word, just up to F and then Forever and then Crew with a capital C. You'll find it, hashtag 1KD Forever Crew. Look, if it's a 1KD engine issue like that, you can just, boom, do it in there. Um, everyone that's got a 1KD should be in there. What else can I say? If you've got any questions, um, don't, don't ring me for little questions or even EJR questions. Please ask your questions on a group. There's other people with other experiences that can help. It's not just me. And um, But if we've got any new information or you've got a genuine question that I haven't covered yet, I'm going to make another video on it. But I need to see the questions in the groups. I don't use Messenger. Um, obviously, if you do want to buy any parts like the injector kit or whatever, then definitely give me a ring once you're ready to do that, particularly if you've watched that buying injectors video on YouTube. 
Um, and of course we've got the Prado front wheel bearings ready, assembled to go, and the, the big front engine job, timing belt kit, water pump, and belt and bearings, and all that sort of thing. And that just about covers you on a Prado, I'm telling you. You do those few big things when they come up. Other than that, you're gonna be changing oil, filters, whatever. But all that's covered in other videos. This one's getting a bit long. If you've watched all the way to the end, you've done well, you are educated. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and you will be notified if you turn on notifications of the next important information coming your way. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.